in the future, humans won't physically move anymore. It all started for me in 1988, when something happened that actually should destine my future. Back then, I had the opportunity to be one of those little guys that are next to the pitch and collecting balls at the European Championship in Germany. Back there, you can see a picture of me, and I looked a lot younger back then, I can, I can tell you. Nevertheless, there was not much that I can remember from, that, from those two games that I, that I joined, but one thing that should be stuck in my memory forever and also should destine my future. It was this moment of walking through the basement of the stadium, feeling the loudness and the voice of 60,000 people increasing, your heartbeat rising, and the adrenaline taking over your body. This moment actually made me understand why professional athletes put so much blood, sweat, and tears into practicing their game, and why they trade so many years of their life to be able to compete on the highest level. I was actually not too good in sports. Actually, I never participated in a sport where I reached something close to a professional level. Especially in football, I was actually pretty bad. Nevertheless, I always loved sport. And years later, I actually started studying industrial design. Um, and I had the opportunity to, yeah, to combine my passion for sports with my profession and did like a foot, foot, um, football diploma. Um, years later, I uh, worked in an agency um, where I did like industrial design, and then after that, I had the opportunity to work for one of the biggest sporting goods companies in the world. Um, over there, you can see me next to quite a decent football player, I would say. Um, since then, I'm thinking and dreaming about the future of football footwear, and in particular, the micro-unit of human mobility, the foot. Aristotle once said, life requires movement. And if you think about it, this was actually the driving force in nature. Think about a lion, for example, hunting a gazelle. The individual species had to secure their survival through movement. This basic principle of nature got side-chained by the development of the modern human, as we know him, 200,000 years ago. Humans developed two-legged movement, which allowed for far better energy efficiency compared to the quadrupedalism of the apes. But this also had an influence on our feet. Um, our feet lost their grasping functionality and the toes got shorter for walking. But there's also like one more thing in the development of humans that is not to underestimate. It's the significant elongation of childhood, which resulted in a higher brain capacity, and then also in the intelligence that we know today. This allowed us to invent tools like the wheel or fire, which made our life far more comfortable. But it also helped us to organize ourselves inside those early tribes, be it like a collector or a hunter. But if you think about it, what was actually the reason for people to move throughout history? I would say for social and environmental influences, which we can see a lot happening right now in many parts of the world with the refugee crisis, which is going on, unfortunately. But there's also one more thing that you shouldn't underestimate. It's the human curiosity, which was the force that really drove us to um, experience and, and travel beyond the borders of, of our continents and uh, the oceans. And it also made us strive to leave this planet. And this kind of strife for nutrition actually resulted in the nomadism of our first ancestors, who were also known to have created the first known form of footwear. The advantages were pretty obvious because it allowed to protect the sensitive human foot against the cold climate, as well as it allowed to, to um, secure the foot against sharp objects on the ground. The construction back then was pretty simple. One layer of leather filled with hay or grass for thermal protection. 
Still, footwear was only worn by small groups around the world, which changed dramatically during the European Renaissance, where suddenly all social classes started wearing footwear. The example shown here is like a riding boot that got adopted by kings to appear taller. This also marked the uh, natural gait cycle of, of human movement. During the Victorian age, life got a lot more comfortable for us because people were moving into bigger industrial areas where they were working in the farming or the textile industry, in the mining or the textile industry, and life got a lot more easy. It is actually believed that the first known form of footwear or running footwear was created back then. The example shown here is a leather shoe with a spiked outsole for better traction during running. You can probably imagine how painful it would be to wear those in our days. During the age of electricity, life got even more comfortable for us. People started to watch sports and the hospitality of their home on their couch, with a bee in their hand, and a remote control. One could actually argue that the remote control had a similar influence on the mobility of people as the wheel. The other example shown here is the Telstar, which was actually designed to improve the visibility on screen. You might get the point where I'm going here. During the age of the internet, we witnessed a convenient, fast flow of data and information around the globe. Also, trends spread like wildfire. Synthetic materials replaced leather-based constructions because they allowed for better placement of functionality inside the footwear. We also witnessed physical products disappearing into the digital space. Now imagine a shoe that is perfectly tailored for your feet and totally is harmonized with the movement of your body. And I'm not talking just about both feet, I'm talking about each foot individually. All of this is happening and it's possible in the robots-driven production era of Industry 4.0, where data-driven data -driven product creation allows for far better adoption of products to the human body. That's great, right? We've got everything in place so that we can finally move. But here's the thing, things are actually moving for us. In our times, you don't need to work, socialize, communicate location-based. People don't have to actually move anymore. They can sustain their entire life from home. We see a worrying worldwide decline in physical human mobility. And if you think about Aristotle that I mentioned earlier, maybe in our times, he was wrong, because actually life doesn't require movement anymore. That's actually already pretty bad, but it can get worse. If you remember, earlier I said, like, physical products disappearing to the digital space. Now imagine a future where we disappear into the digital space. I'm talking about a future of connected human brains comfortably embedded in the digital space, without any need to move anymore. In this dark scenario that I just painted, will there be the need for public transportation? Will there be the need for footwear or sports? Will we survive? Terry Pratchett once said, if you don't know where you're coming from, you don't know where you're going. And to me, this actually pretty nicely outlines how the past can empower the future. If you look at the upcoming generations, Z and Alpha, it's getting obvious that they fundamentally differ from previous generation in terms of approaching new technology, new media, um, experience, as well as community. It is also obvious that it's, as we already know, that there will be far less physical products in the future, that we need to approach them in a different way. One simple solution to this problem could be to create tools based on our basic human instinct, the curiosity, that combine digital as well as experience and community and incentivize mobility. 
if you look at us, the Generation X as well as the Millennials, we actually represent the old because we carry knowledge far back or past um, the times of digitalization and Industry 4.0. As the cadence of innovation is getting faster and faster, it becomes our duty to create a future for and with the upcoming generations to prevent this future scenario that I just outlined earlier. It is important to find a common understanding, not only in sports, but in every part of human society to approach this problem. Even if people say that the future is already written, there's nothing you can do. It is up to you, actually, to believe that your mindset, your creativity, has the power to change the world, and that you have got the power to inspire people to move again. Only then, humanity will physically move in the future. Let's start designing our future now. Thank you very much.